In this daily data, in response to several requests, I'm going to discuss a new study published in the journal Nature Neuroscience that looked at the relationship between brain size and socioeconomic status. The study found that class and brain size are associated with one another, and that this has led to sensationalist headlines like poverty shrinks brain from birth. Such conclusions are premature. As I will show, the design of this study doesn't actually permit any inference about whether or not poverty causes brains to shrink. And information from behavioral genetics actually suggests that there is a much more likely explanation of the study's findings. In the study, 1,099 volunteers between the ages of 3 and 20 had their brain surface areas measured after completing cognitive tests of attention, memory, reading, and language skills and providing researchers with information about their parents' income and educational level. The study found that the less money and education parents had, the smaller their kids' brains tended to be. This effect was most pronounced in brain areas related to cognitive skills like reading and spatial reasoning. These differences were the same for all age groups and for members of each ethnic group included in the study. In another, as of yet unpublished study, one of the researchers of this paper found a similar association between parental socioeconomic status and brain size among one-month-old infants. The study also found that poor children did worse than rich children on tests of cognitive skills and that the gap between them was reduced, though not eliminated, after controlling for brain size. These results have widely been interpreted as showing that early environmental influences, like nutrition and the prenatal environment, cause poor children to have smaller brains and worse cognitive skills than rich children. The problem with this interpretation is that the authors didn't falsify a more likely explanation for the association between brain size and socioeconomic status. Namely, that parents of larger brains tend to be smarter and so make more money and then pass on the genes that make their brains larger than average to their children. This explanation might seem unreasonable. A lot of us have been told that brain size has nothing to do with intelligence and that intelligence has little to do with genes or income. But all of these beliefs are completely at odds with what intelligence researchers have shown over the past few decades. To begin with, let's look at brain size and intelligence. There have been three meta-analyses on brain size and intelligence published since the year 2000. These studies looked at anywhere from a few dozen to over 100 findings from previous studies, and all three found the same thing. Smarter people tend to have larger brains. Moreover, how a person's brain size changes over time is known to predict how their intelligence changes over time and specific genes have been identified, which are associated with both brain size and intelligence. The science on this is clear. There is a relationship between intelligence and brain size, and that relationship is probably, in part, genetic. Now let's look at genes and intelligence. Once again, virtually all of the evidence in behavioral genetics shows that part, though not all, of why some people are smarter than others is because of their genes. This is why identical twins, who show 100% of their DNA, have far more similar scores on intelligence tests than fraternal twins, who only share half of their DNA, even when they are adopted into different homes of birth. This is also why strangers, who are slightly more similar genetically speaking than average, also have slightly more similar than average scores on intelligence tests. On top of all this, numerous genes have been identified which differ between people and which affect intelligence. Finally, intelligence almost definitely impacts how much money people make. Even if you look within the same family, you find that the kids with higher intelligence test scores grow up to make more money than their siblings. And intelligence predicts how well people do on many specific tasks at work, as well as how they do in school, which would explain why they tend to earn more money. Of course, intelligence is far from the only factor that influences how much a person makes. But all else being equal, being smarter clearly helps. What past research tells us, then, is that people who are smarter than average tend to make more money and have larger brains, and this is in part due to genes. So we would expect that poor children would inherit their parents' genes, and as a result have smaller than average brains. Instead of relating mainstream intelligence research to their findings, the authors of the current study offered unfounded speculation about various environmental variables that might influence brain size and vary with economic class. I think the genes and intelligence explanation is better than a purely environmental one for three reasons. First, we have tons of evidence showing that brain size impacts intelligence. The environmental theories these authors suggest are mostly just speculation. Secondly, the fact that these brain size differences were found in one-month-olds eliminates a lot of potential environmental explanations. And thirdly, the fact that the association between economic class and brain size stays the same from age 3 to 20 suggests to me that disadvantaged environments probably aren't the cause. After all, if being poor caused your brain to shrink, 
you might expect that the longer you stay poor, the smaller, relative to rich people, your brain would become. But that isn't what the study found. Genes, in my opinion, offer a much better explanation for the consistency of these findings across age groups. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see a new video about a new study six days a week, consider subscribing to Daily Data. And if you want to help our videos do better on YouTube's search engine, consider leaving a comment on this video.